Hello everyone. In this session, we will design and understand a simple microprogrammed control unit. So far, we have already discussed about the various things in a microprogrammed control unit, such as the control memory or a sequencer, and uh, routines within the control memory. It could be either a subroutine or a opcode routine. We have discussed about several things. <music> Now, what we do is we will understand about a simple microprogrammed control unit, and the things will be very simple here, because straight away if we start with the complicated thing, the things are always complex. So what we do is we are going to understand and witness a simplest microprogrammed control unit that can be possible. Let us have a look at. Before you design the control memory, or you before you design. the microprogrammed control unit initially we need to understand the current computer systems configuration what is the configuration of our computer system we have seen the design of a actual computer system in which there is a main memory is of a size 4096 words with each size is of 16 bits and at the same time we do have several registers program counter address register instruction register data register accumulator temporary register input register and output register okay now what we do is we will make some simple changes in this because when you want to design a microprogrammed control unit that has to be based on some specific system looking at this we do have too many registers to make the thing simple what we do is we will have only five registers simply we do have only five registers as specified here the five registers are data register address register program counter accumulator and uh, alu 1 2 3 4 in addition to the alu we do have just four registers in fact program counter address register instruction there is no instruction register data register and accumulator now we remove these registers from the cpu in relation to which we do have an alu there is no instruction register here in the simplified system we are not using an instruction register if you don't use an instruction register where the instruction is going to get stored in the previous case we have already seen when an instruction is fetched it will directly get transferred to the instruction register right now we don't have an instruction register now the 100 dollar question is where the fetched instruction is going to get stored don't worry we do have a data register what is the purpose of the data register the data register's purpose is going to hold the operand right here we will use the data register as an instruction register in the initial phase of the instruction cycle till the fetch cycle ends this data register works as an instruction register after fetch cycle there comes a decode cycle decode phase rather after the fetch phase there is something called a decode phase during the decode phase instruction op code will get decoded right let me tell you something after the decode phase we don't require the instruction to be available within the cpu because the instruction has already been decoded the operations are already interpreted at that time we don't require the instruction code to be stored within the cpu so during the fetch and the decode phases the data register acts as an instruction register during the execution phase the data register acts as the data register which stores the actual operand because after the decode phase the operations are already interpreted we know what is the alu operation to be performed right for that during the fetch cycle and the decode cycle this data register acts as an instruction register but right after the decode has been performed we don't require this instruction any more rather we do require the operand to be stored so in the execution phase in the data register we don't have the instruction rather we do have an operand and finally accumulator the alu you know that alu is going to perform the operations in between data register and accumulator and finally the contents will get transferred to the accumulator here data register can receive the information from accumulator program counter or main memory address register can receive the information from program counter or data register 
program counter can receive the information only from address register alu performs a micro operation with the data from accumulator and data register what are these simply now you know the data register what is data register data register sometimes it acts as instruction register at a time it will receive the data from the main memory during which it may also get an operand at a time also it will receive the data from the main memory right sometimes it also may get the data from the accumulator that is at a specific point of period when you want to transfer the contents from the accumulator to the main memory we can't send it directly we are using a data register the data register let us understand if you want to communicate with the main memory always data register must be used anything that is fetched out of the main memory will be transferred to the data register it could be either an instruction or an operand at the same time if you want to send some data item into the main memory i do require data register from the accumulator i can't send it to the main memory if you want to send some data from the accumulator to the main memory let us say there is a store instruction store instruction a store instruction transfers the information of accumulator to the main memory but accumulator cannot communicate with the main memory directly so the contents of the accumulator will get transferred to the data register from the data register to the main memory the contents will get transferred so here you need to understand that data register data register will receive the information from the main memory also transfers the information to the main memory address register can receive the information from program counter or data register you know that address register obviously the program counter as it is going to hold the address part of the next instruction the program counter value will have to get transferred to the address register for fetching and sometimes address register also can get the information from the data register and it will do so because sometimes the data register holds the address part of an operand once again let me appreciate this let us see initially you know that the instruction is available in the data register as the data register holds the instruction this will be divided into two parts one is op code second one is address part of the operand let us say add 240 mind you we are using only data register there is no instruction register here initial the first two phases of the instruction cycle that is fetch phase and the decode phase the data register is going to hold the instruction our instruction has two parts one is op code part and one more is address part now this is the address of the operand which will have to be located within the main memory and at the same time you need to understand that the data register cannot locate the addresses within the main memory we do have an address register for which the data register's address part should be transferred to the address register so this address register may receive the information either from the program counter or from the address register sorry or from the data register program counter can receive the information only from the address register because these two are the only registers that deal with the addresses alu performs the micro operations with the data from accumulator and data register i have already explained you guys that the alu is going to perform the micro operations taking the operands from the accumulator and data register finally transfers the contents to the accumulator when it comes to the control unit there are two registers one is subroutine registers what is subroutine register subroutine register is going to hold the written address when a subroutine has been called and the control unit also has another register which is called car control address register is going to hold the current micro instructions address that is going to be executed let me show you the block diagram of this micro programmed control unit on the screen you are just witnessing a micro programmed control unit block diagram in which this upper section is actually depicting the memory and the processors registers this section is depicting or representing the control unit in this control unit we do have a memory control memory the control memory you know that the size is 128 words now here one additional thing is present here what is that let us have a look at in the control memory we have understood the size the size of the control memory is 128 words but one word unlike the main memory one word is equal to 20 bits in the main memory one word is equal to 16 bits but in the control memory one word is equal to 20 bits why we will have a look at later 
okay so you can clearly see the data register the data register is going to communicate with the main memory either to and from if you want to transfer the information to the memory you do require a data register and if you want to receive the information from the main memory you you do require the data register again it could be either an instruction or a data operator the program counter and address register okay and these are the registers that are available in the cpu section of course in the cpu we do have also a control unit within this control unit i do have two registers one is subroutine register and one more is car control address register okay and there is an accumulator our alu is going to collect the information from the accumulator and the data register alu i think i guess it is not shown in the picture yeah this is the alu this is the alu the alu receives the information from the data register and accumulator and it performs the operation and finally the contents will get transferred to the accumulator this is what a short while ago i explained you guys now we have witnessed a complete uh, system architecture for designing the micro programmed control unit in the next session we will understand exactly how a micro programmed control unit design rather the control memory is going to have several routines we'll have a look at all those routines and understand them thank you